Foxholes, Military Tactic, World War II to Present Day. World War I had quickly degenerated into a conflict of mostly static land warfare, based around extensive networks of defensive trenches. These were elaborate fortifications that were semi-permanent and took a great deal of time and effort to construct, as well as a fair degree of engineering expertise. This war had quickly shown the need for infantry to have meaningful cover from the devastating effect of artillery bombardments and rapid-firing machine guns. But by World War II, a new type of more mobile warfare had emerged with the introduction of improved tank technology and dedicated ground-attack aircraft. Combined with such tactics as the highly successful so-called German Blitzkrieg, infantry tactics had to move with the times to counter this new style of highly mobile and effective warfare. So the Americans in North Africa experimented with the idea of the shell-scrape approach. This was just a very shallow depression that allowed a soldier to lie horizontally in it with a few inches of dirt for protection. In reality, this proved to offer the soldier far too little protection against small arms fire or shrapnel splinters. And it was particularly useless against tanks, for if they overran your position, you simply got crushed to death as they passed overhead. So instead, the foxhole concept was adopted. It consisted of a simple pit that was normally around four to five feet deep, designed to hold one or two men. The foxhole was wider near the bottom so as to allow occupants to crouch down while under heavy artillery fire or tank attacks. This defensive earthwork could be completed in around a half an hour by a soldier using nothing more than a standard entrenching tool. Often it was covered with tree branches or camouflage netting. And though it was normally meant to be a temporary structure, sometimes in a siege or a prolonged battle, soldiers might end up living for days or even weeks in these rather basic entrenchments. The Germans took this concept one stage further and in some cases put a turret from an obsolete French or German tank on top of their foxholes in order to create a more permanent and formidable fixed position on such defensive networks as the Atlantic Wall Coastal Defenses System and the Siegfried Line. Whereas the Japanese developed what they call octopus pots, this was a one-man foxhole that was much shallower and better concealed than the standard foxhole with a trapdoor style lid. It was chiefly used as an ambush device and proved to be highly effective. It got its name from its resemblance to Japanese fishermen's traditional octopus pots. Later, the communist forces in the Vietnam War used a similar type, primarily as a covert observation post or sniper position. The U.S. forces there referred to them as spider holes, as they reminded them of the holes used by the trapdoor spider. Today, most modern armies still train their troops in entrenching techniques, especially using foxholes in defensive positions. Although they're still dug by hand using a shovel or entrenching tool, using mechanical diggers or special-shaped explosive charges to construct foxholes have become more commonplace. <laughs>